Hello everyone, my name is Justin Thomasy from the STARS Laboratory at the University of Toronto Institute for Aerospace Studies, and this is Learned Camera Gain and Exposure Control for Improved Visual Feature Detection and Matching, presented virtually for ICRA 2021. This paper is about improving the robustness of feature-based visual navigation algorithms, such as visual odometry or visual SLAM, used by autonomous robots operating in real-world dynamic environments. The goal of visual navigation is to estimate the six degree of freedom pose change of a robot navigating within an environment using onboard cameras. Accurate motion estimation is often accomplished through the use of algorithms that detect and match or track unique image features across consecutive frames. The performance of these feature detection and matching algorithms is largely dependent on the number of readily identifiable image features and by extension on images that are well exposed, sharp, and rich in information. In contrast, poor quality images can reduce the performance of these algorithms and, in some cases, cause them to fail entirely. Camera image quality can be degraded by rapid motion and highly dynamic environmental lighting conditions. There are three general approaches to improving the robustness of visual navigation algorithms to dynamic lighting conditions. The first approach involves applying some form of post-processing after image capture in an effort to mitigate changes in illumination. The second approach is to utilize feature detection and matching algorithms that have some degree of invariance to brightness variations. These two approaches can help to improve visual navigation when the acquired images already contain sufficient information, but they are applied after image capture and cannot recover information that is lost due to over and under exposure. The third approach, which we follow in this work, is to compensate for dynamic lighting during the image acquisition process by adjusting relevant camera parameters so that acquired images are of high quality. The advantage of this approach is that it can be coupled with the other two to further improve the performance of visual navigation algorithms. The two camera parameters that have the greatest effect on image quality are exposure time and gain. Exposure time refers to the length of time that light from the scene strikes the camera sensor during image capture. Longer exposure times, however, can introduce significant motion blur, especially when dynamic objects are present in the scene or if the camera is moving. Gain refers to an amplification of the measurements made by the camera sensor and serves to increase the overall brightness of an image. However, increasing gain also amplifies the noise in images. In most applications, camera gain and exposure are often set to fixed values or are controlled using built-in proprietary camera parameter control algorithms. Such algorithms tend to have relatively slow, gradual responses to changes in scene lighting and are usually only adequate for situations in which lighting conditions are static or change slowly. These built-in parameter control algorithms are not suited for highly dynamic environments where lighting can change rapidly. Recent work in the area of camera parameter control for visual navigation has focused on the task agnostic reactive adjustment of camera gain and exposure to improve image quality. The goal of these algorithms is typically to adjust camera parameters in order to maximize an image quality metric through some optimization scheme such that acquired images are suitable for visual navigation applications. There have been two main approaches in the literature to developing camera parameter control algorithms. The first focuses on adjusting only camera exposure time, while the second targets both exposure time and gain. Regardless of the approach, these methods generally follow very similar architectures. They each define a unique image quality metric to optimize. Examples of these metrics include the magnitudes of the image gradients, the Shannon entropy of the image, image noise, and weighted combinations of each. The approaches generally work by sampling the parameter space using real or synthetic images acquired or generated at various exposure and gain settings. An optimization of the camera parameters is then carried out to maximize the chosen image metric. The main advantage of these approaches is that they are relatively simple, particularly the exposure-only controllers, as they seek to optimize only one parameter. The main drawback of exposure-only controllers, however, is that the only method for increasing image brightness is to increase the exposure time, which can lead to significant motion blur. To acquire high-quality images in a variety of conditions, both camera gain and exposure must be controlled. The described sampling-based controllers from the literature all behave in a reactive manner. That is, adjustments to camera parameters are only made after a large change in overall image brightness has been recorded, which is too late to prevent the loss of valuable information caused by overexposure or underexposure. 
Although these controllers have been shown to acquire high quality images in benign settings with relatively static lighting conditions, the reactive nature of these controllers limits their applicability as they cannot quickly compensate for dramatic lighting changes. In this paper, we try to resolve the shortcomings of reactive camera parameter controllers through the design and implementation of a learned parameter controller. We posit that improved image quality under dynamic lighting conditions can be obtained through predictive camera parameter adjustments to compensate for impending lighting changes. In this work, we design such a predictive controller by training a deep neural network to adjust the camera gain and exposure time in such a way that the quality of future images will be improved. In addition, we design our controller for a specific visual navigation task, namely feature-based visual odometry. We train a deep convolutional neural network that takes as input a sequence of recent images and the corresponding camera parameter values and outputs updated parameter values that are applied before the next image is acquired. Unlike reactive methods, our approach avoids the limitations of sampling-based techniques through predictive data-driven learning. At test time, our approach makes direct and immediate adjustments to both gain and exposure without the need for iteration. Our network takes as input images acquired over the previous three time steps, along with the corresponding camera gain and exposure settings. We make use of sequential images to ensure that temporal information about the scene and lighting changes is available to the network. We also include the corresponding gain and exposure of each image as input so that the network can decouple changes due to varying parameters from changes due to varying external illumination. Our network operates in real time during image acquisition and is trained with target gain and exposure values to regress the next gain and exposure values to be applied to the camera. An advantage of our approach is that the target gain and exposure values can be generated to suit any task specific problem. In our work, we focused on improving the robustness of feature-based visual odometry, so we used a proxy measure of VO performance for generating our training targets. Our proxy measure is a combination of the number of features found in captured images and the number of inlier feature matches between sequential images. We developed a data labeling procedure that identifies gain and exposure values that lead to images with a high number of features and inlier feature matches. This data labeling approach naturally admits a self-supervised training methodology. That is, the VO front end is leveraged to generate training targets so that our network is trained to output values that will improve the robustness of VO. We use a sampling-based data collection procedure at training time to identify the parameter values that maximize our proxy measure. Our unique sampling approach leverages a dual camera configuration with two identical cameras mounted side by side. To ensure that we effectively sample values that are near, in the majority of cases, to the optimal region of the parameter space, we use an informed sampling approach. Namely, we sample around a reference set of gain and exposure values that already produce satisfactory images, rather than sampling randomly over the entire parameter space. The reference camera values are obtained first using the built-in camera parameter controller. An iterative data collection approach is then employed, where, after training, the built-in controller is swapped out for our trained controller as the reference camera. When better quality images, that is, those having more features or inlier feature matches, are found after perturbing the reference parameter values, the new parameter values are used as training targets. Otherwise, the reference parameters are used. To generate training targets, we consider a window of future images and determine which result in the highest features or inlier feature match counts between images. The corresponding camera gain and exposure values are then used as the training targets for that particular time step. Using the number of image features as an image metric yields images and training parameters that are bright and well exposed. Consequently, this metric is useful for generating targets across lighting transitions. However, due to the sparsity of parameter sampling in our dataset, the use of this metric to generate training targets can result in sequential targets that are quite variable. Conversely, using the number of inlier feature matches between frames as a metric generally yields images that have relatively consistent gain and exposure settings across frames. Consequently, this metric is well suited for generating training targets under static lighting conditions. We aim to balance the responsiveness of the image feature metric with the stability of the inlier feature match metric 
through the use of the weighted combination of the target values. To determine the performance of our learned camera parameter controller, we made use of the same experimental setup from data collection. One camera acquired images with our camera control algorithm, while the other made use of a competing controller. We drove our test vehicle on roads with tunnels in the cities of London and Toronto, Ontario, Canada, under a range of outdoor illumination conditions. Tunnels are ideal environments for stress testing our predictive parameter controller, since changes in brightness of up to 120 decibels may occur during outdoor tunnel transitions. Additionally, we collected data on sections of unobstructed road where lighting conditions were relatively static. We then analyzed the quality of the acquired images offline using OpenCV Orb and LibViso2 feature matching algorithms. We quantify the performance of each controller by measuring various statistics related to the number of inlier feature matches in images with both Orb and LibViso2. Specifically, we measure the median number of inlier feature matches and the minimum number of inlier feature matches over an experimental trajectory. The median number of feature matches provides an indication of the expected average performance of VO over the trajectory, while the minimum number of matches is important because VO may fail in cases where the number of feature matches drops to a small value. We further specify two types of experiments, dynamic and static. Dynamic experiments correspond to the tunnel traversals, while static experiments refer to the unobstructed sections of road. Our experimental results show that our controller outperforms both the built-in auto gain and auto exposure controller, as well as a controller from the literature. Under static lighting conditions, all of the parameter controllers were able to obtain large median and minimum number of feature match counts. However, our network generally produced images containing more matchable features. In particular, our controller learned to overexpose the sky in order to better expose the road region because a large number of useful features are found on the road region, while the sky contains limited features. The advantages of our approach are most noticeable in the dynamic tunnel transition experiments. Here, our network obtains significantly higher median and minimum inlier feature match counts. In particular, our controller was able to predict and compensate for the quick, dramatic changes in lighting due to the transitions at the tunnel entrances and exits. Additionally, our controller learned to increase image brightness primarily using camera gain while generally maintaining a lower exposure compared with the built-in controller, as increases in exposure can cause significant motion blur, especially at the speeds that our experiments were conducted. Finally, we sought to determine if our method improves the overall robustness of VO. To do so, we processed the images from the London and Toronto tunnel experiment sequences using a VO implementation of OrbSlam2, which can fail to track when images do not contain sufficient numbers of matchable features. We recorded the number of sequences for which OrbSlam2 was able to maintain successful tracking throughout. We found that OrbSlam2 was able to successfully track across all tunnel sequences using images acquired by our method. Conversely, OrbSlam2 consistently failed when using the images acquired with the built-in parameter controller. In conclusion, we learned that the predictive adjustment of camera gain and exposure settings can improve the quality of acquired images for use in visual navigation. We demonstrated that our CNN, trained in a self-supervised manner with targets generated from a feature-based VO front end, selects camera parameters that result in images containing significantly more features and sequential inlier feature matches compared with reactive algorithms under both static and dynamic lighting conditions. Although we focused on improving the performance of feature-based VO, our general approach can be altered through an appropriate choice of loss function to improve the quality of images for use in many different visual navigation and mapping tasks. To learn more about this work, please consult our paper in Robotics and Automation Letters. Thank you to all my co-authors, colleagues, and the organizers of this conference.